Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Wee Knives Black Void Opus, um, a, which is a design by Justin Lundqvist, who is a pretty well-known designer. Uh, I've talked about his stuff a fair amount in the past. Um, but first off, before I go any further, I want to thank Blade HQ for helping me pick this little guy up, as well as my Patreon patrons, who are absolutely wonderful and make the channel possible. Thank you both to those. Um, and next thing, uh, let's do some size comparison real quick. This is actually a reasonably small knife. Um, we'll actually start off with a size comparison to a ruler, which was on my desk as I was writing reviews. What we see here, blade comes in under about three inches. Here it is against the Spydeco Paramilitary 2, the Ontario Rat number 2. So what we see here is uh, not, not particularly large, and in terms of handle, actually a little smaller than the Rat 2. So uh, there's that, and then here it is against the Spydeco Delica, as always. And so what we see here is... Uh, there you go. That's your size. Um, next up, uh, let's go on ahead and talk a little bit about... Oh, and actually, hold on. One of the size comparisons that I think is actually relevant here. Um, I want to compare it against the Rayot Tribute, which is another recently uh, produced uh, the, the overseas-made front flip and knife. Um, very, very different in terms of style, but actually in terms of overall uh, you know, size and in terms of... Uh, there are a lot of similarities there. So um, th 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 there we go. Next thing, um, this is a design, like I said, by Justin Lundqvist. Lundqvist is pretty well known for, uh, well, frankly, as a designer, generally speaking. He's done a lot of independent projects. He's also made knives like the Kaiser Feist. Is probably the one that people know best of his. I'm sure there were some other ones that people are aware of, but nonetheless, uh, Lundqvist is a very well-known designer, and this is actually a little bit out of his range. Uh, generally speaking, uh, in terms of design and whatnot, but I'm actually really happy to see that. So that's who we're talking about here. Then Wee Knives, of course, is a Chinese-based uh, company that has been doing some really nice work lately. So let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. This very interesting knife right here. On the good side, to start with, um, there are actually a couple of different options with this one. Uh, considering the knife's name is Black Void Opus, which, by the way, I could put into both the good and the bad, right? I mean, it is a crazy name. It's a little pretentious, but it's also pretty cool. Anyways, I, I elected to go with the full black black void opus the black -er void opus i don't know look uh, anyways you've got versions though with bronze titanium here rather than dlc you've got carbon fiber inlays rather than this is actually a g10 inlay there um, you have all kinds of other things. All of them are going to be right in this same price range, between 215 and 225 But still, um, you get a bunch of different options there. So even if the full black, black void opus isn't quite your style. Whoa, lost it when I put it on the table there. Anyways, um, th 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 there were lots of different options for you. Next thing, um, this is actually a pretty lightweight knife, which I appreciate very much. If I put this guy onto my scale here, which is my... Um, my black void scale, um, what we see here is uh, we're at 2.77 ounces uh, for a little bit of, or a little bit under three inches of blade here. So we're right around the same vicinity of an ounce an inch. That's a beautiful thing and makes this guy uh, pretty easy to carry. Next thing, blade on this guy. We're going to talk a little bit about the blade grind on this a little later on because, well, the, the attentive viewer will notice that the blade grind is only on one side. This is flat with a swedge. And this side actually has the central grind. But the blade here is actually quite nice in that they've brought it down to a very thin edge right here. The blade here is 20 CV, CPM 20 CV, as you can read right there. Probably just barely. But that does, in fact, say 20 CV right there which is a beautiful thing. And you know what? The grind is nice. This is a blade that actually does good cutting. So I appreciate that very much. Next thing, the action on this guy is quite good. This knife is a front flipper. You can kind of pull it out with two fingers, but the way that this knife is meant to be opened is by putting your finger right on this little textured area here and then pulling it backwards. And you can do that from the top like this, and it works perfectly well. Or you can do it with your thumb, kind of lighter style. Or there are plenty of other ways that you can front flip a knife, but at the same time, whoa there. As don't do it like that. That was not the way you should do it. Do not learn from that little bit there. Whew. Ooh, okay, anyways, it's always more difficult to do these things under a camera, by the way, because I have a limited height in this domain. So anyways, I digress. Um, there, there are many different ways to open the thing, um, but it's got a nice detent. Uh, it's very smooth. It's very snappy. And when it's not trying to be deployed by a complete idiot, um, I guarantee you it works quite well. There, there were no real concerns there. And I also do appreciate, by the way, the versatility of that, right? There were a number of different grips. A number, And so I think this is going to be a front flipper that's interesting to people who might not conventionally 
who might not like the conventional thumb style front flipper. So um, to me at least, all of that is the good here is that it's got a versatile opening, a nice action, a nice blade. It's pretty lightweight and you get a couple of different options there. Um, on the great side, uh, to me, the cool factor of this design is really off the charts, right? This is a very unique knife. And I mean that in a couple of different ways. I mean, to start with, the knife is very minimalist, right? There's one screw and then a second screw here, and that's really it. Everything else is hollowed through there. Next thing you're going to notice is that there is a bunch of internal skeletonization and basically almost swedges done on the inside here. It's not the case that the inside of this is perfectly flat, right? Um, no, they've done a bunch of carving on the inside here, which means that this knife, as it is closed, you get all kinds of different looks in here. and all It's just, it's a really cool thing. And this adds to a bunch of weight reduction. It is really fundamentally made differently. I mean, if, like the construction, it's a line of lock at the end of the day, right? But it, it feels like it is sculpted and made and designed very differently from anything else on the market. And I really do appreciate that. I think it's also very interesting. I think it's very unusual, and it's got kind of a cool cyberpunky sort of feeling to it that I, I have to say I, I appreciate. And then the DLC, I think, goes really well here. And overall, even the, uh, the grind on this blade, this kind of chisel grind with a swedge on the top, I don't recall having ever seen anything like this. Um, this knife, I mean, there, there, there probably is. I mean, no, nothing new under the sun, but at the same time, this knife is very, very unique. And I have a lot of respect for Lundqvist for coming up with it, right? For doing something this kind of wacky and for doing it well and creating something that at the end of the day is very, very strange, but is also pretty compelling. And so to me, at least, 100%, the very best part of this knife is the design. The fact that it's got this chisel, that it's got all of the various cur curves and contours doors and yeah, I, I think it's a really neat little thing. So to me, at least that's what's great. On the bad side, start with centering is way off. That's a joke, of course. It's a chisel ground blade. Of course, the centering's not going to be off. But nonetheless, at first glance, like after the disassembly, like, oh, oh okay, okay, never mind. It's supposed to be bad. So um, that, 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 that's mostly just a joke. Next thing, price on this guy is fine. Um, the, the, These days, 225 bucks buys a fair amount of knife, right? From a bunch of different people, a bunch of different... But you know what? So it's not like, oh, my God, value, but it's not an, oh, my God, terrible price either. It's, it's fine, right? Next thing, ergonomically speaking, you know what? This was designed for the eye. The biggest sin, actually, is this relatively thin, relatively tall pocket clip here which is uh, definitely going to stick up a little bit into your hand as you're doing that, but you also get, like, this little gap between the... Like, ergonomically speaking, is this the very best thing ever? No, but it will absolutely cut things. So, you know, whatever. Not a huge, huge deal. Next thing, the clip on this guy is not great. Um, it is just a little too tight, and it is very small. And as a result, this is a little bit of a pain to get into and out of the pocket. I'm sure I could take the clip off, rebend it, and maybe end up a little bit better. But the clip on this guy, especially given the ergos, ultimately didn't end up feeling great. And honestly, it doesn't feel like it follows the lines of the rest of the knife all that well. It's okay, but it, it just the clip on this to me is the, the, probably the weakest part of this. Then finally, on the bad side, one thing to keep in mind is, like I said, this is a chisel grind, right? Where if I hold up a flat, you know, uh, flat surface against it, we see that one side of the blade is very far away from the flat surface and the other side is completely flush with it throughout, right? This is a full-on chisel grind. Um, and we even see that there's not a bevel on the other side here. So the only sharpened bevel is over here. Not that hard to maintain, but the thing is, it is going to be a little bit strange in the sharpening front. It's going to be different than a lot of the other knives in, your, uh, in the collection with a conventional V-bevel, like, for instance, the Rayot Tribute here, where it is uh, brought down to a sharpened edge on both sides there and ground on both sides. But the uh, more important thing is actually cutting with this guy. It does tend to pull a little bit. What I mean by that is, for instance, uh, you know, you go downstairs, you, you know, you can cut on any level, right? But I went downstairs, I did a little cutting into a long piece of cardboard, and it took active correction to keep the knife from going off to one direction, right? Because, and that makes sense, right? The, the blade is naturally going to want to feed away from the chisel ramp. And so it kind of naturally wanted to curve down like this. You will adjust to this very quickly. And if you are a person who buys this knife and wants to break down a great deal of cardboard with your Ray, uh, with your uh, Wee Knives Black Void Opus here, which again, I don't know, maybe, why not? You'll get used to it, but it is definitely a little bit unusual, and I think there is a good reason why most people in the world aren't doing chisel grinds. This is very much an aesthetic choice, and it's one that I think works aesthetically, but isn't necessarily your best choice when it comes to, well, um, non-aesthetics, right? Um, so anyways, uh, th 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 there you go. To me, all of that is the bad, is that it's got a super weird grind. The clip isn't amazing. The ergos aren't great. Um, the, the, the price is okay. Not amazing, not terrible. It's just in the middle there. 
you. And of course, the centering's way off, but that's not actually a problem. Um, on the ugly front, there's nothing really ugly here, so let's go to the final conclusion, which is, honestly, this is kind of neat, right? At some level, this, this feels different. This feels unusual. It's got nice options. It's got nice weight. It's got fine blade. Very good action, pretty versatile opening, and a really undeniable sense of style, an undeniable sense of cool. By the way, I could also use to have this logo shrunk down a little bit. It kind of breaks up the effect a little. Um, it is, of course, uh, not a huge value. The air goes on amazing, the clip is kind of iffy, and the grind is not the most practical thing ever. But honestly, my biggest feeling coming away from this is I'm glad that this is a thing. I'm glad that somebody did this, right? Um, this is design. And in a world where there were too many, in a world, where there were too many very boring, you know, new releases where it's just like, hey, that looks pretty much like everything else we've ever seen. This is very different. This is unique. I have not seen this particular arrangement and sort of the internal twistiness that all of these various choices allow for. This is well done. Um, the, you know, the fit and finish are right there where I want it. The action is good. This really does stand out. And in a world of very, very boring freaking pocket knives, I really appreciate that Lundqvist went like, okay, you know what, Black Void Opus, full send, here you go, yay. And I appreciate very much that he did. And I appreciate that we took the risk and made this guy, because I think it is actually something very interesting. It is something very unique, and it is something pretty impressive. Am I going to be sending here, like, if somebody walks up to me and says, Nick, I'm looking for a good first pocket knife, my budget is $250, am I sending them to the Black Void Opus? No, probably not. Unless they're asking me specifically for something super artistic, I don't necessarily know that I would send, you know, just your random first knife person here because there were lots of functional pocket knives in that range. However, this, and like, uh, to be honest with you, there's nothing that this piece does better than anybody else except look cool. But you know what? It does really look cool. It does stand out. And I think this is a, um, this is best viewed sort of as a compelling intersection of art and tool. You are definitely paying a little tiny bit of a price in terms of tool with the chisel ground blade, etc., as well as price, um, uh, for a, a little bit of extra art here. Um, but I think this is at a very, very nice place in that. And so even though this isn't necessarily like, oh yeah, this is the perfect pocket knife for every human, I can see that there will be people drawn to this. And honestly, I'm one of them. It's, uh, you know, not a standalone own perfect choice, but you know what? If you like what you, I'm sorry, if you're picking up what he's putting down right here, um, then this is absolutely going to be a gem for you, and uh, it could be very, very hard to avoid uh, picking one of these guys up in your collection. Maybe it's not his magnum opus, but uh, who knows? Anyways, hope this has been interesting to you, and I'll see you black here for the next time. See, I got black, void, and opus in puns separately. Uh, okay. And I hope this has been interesting. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.